So as we get ready to hear this word, we lift up a prayer. God, thank you for this day together. Thank you for the ways that you are moving in the world, in our lives, in our hearts, and we thank you for that peace and that rest that you bring. Open our hearts and our minds and our ears to hear this word that you have for us today, a word of hope, a word of grace, a word of challenge, and a word of thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. What is the best gift you ever received? Think back to a Christmas morning or maybe a birthday, some special gift you received. What is it? What was the best one that really sticks out in your memory? Was it a bike? Was it the Nintendo? Was it a, how about a Tinker Toy? Did you remember getting Tinker Toys? Anybody in that age group? Okay. How about the Erector set? Do you remember that one? Oh, yeah. How about uh, the Buck Rogers disintegrating pistol? Tell me what era you grew up in. The Red Ryder BB gun? You'll shoot your eye out. How about a slip and slide? When those first came out in the 60s, those were the best, right? How about Barbie? Your first Barbie? Yeah. Silly putty? My son is seven years old. You know what he wanted for his birthday? Mr. Potato Head. A classic. Always good, right? Mr. Potato Head, yes. Oh, Slinky? Good stuff. How did it make you feel to receive a gift like that? Excited? Joyful? Did you lose your mind and freak out? I'm going to assume that someone loved you enough to give you a gift like that, to help you feel that way. They wanted you to feel that joy, that, that excitement, to give you the desires of the heart and to make you happy. So if you had someone who loved you like that, know that you are blessed. We read in Matthew's gospel today, People wanting to know if Jesus is, is the one they've been waiting for, and they wonder about John the Baptist's message of judgment. And he was calling people out in the wilderness, right? And Jesus seems a little different. He calls people in a different way, and he wants them to receive this gift of God's grace like children, like children, with that joy, with that excitement and gratitude that you might feel on a, on a Sunday morning that joy that, that opens up a gift and, and your eyes get wide and you shout. Watch this video. It was supposed to be the worst Christmas present ever. A couple wrapped up a banana and gave it to their toddler and they certainly weren't expecting this reaction. Two-year-old Aria Mojica squealed with joy. She really loves bananas and asked her mom to unpeel it right then so she could eat it. This heartwarming video has gone viral with millions of views online. Love it. <laughs> banana! Wow! I, I didn't hear anybody mention a banana as their favorite gift, but that kind of joy, that's what we're after, that kind of celebration. That's the great stuff. God wants us to feel that too, that pure joy, adulation, excitement, gratitude. He wants that for all of us to live this way, to celebrate and give thanks and rejoice in all of God's promises. We hear that, Jesus promising these gifts of grace and mercy and life everlasting. But how do we know that's for us? How do we know that's true? How do we know that promise is ours? Well, any Mets fans here? To quote pitcher Tug McGraw, you got to believe. You got to believe in faith we receive these gifts. And we know the promises are for us. Through faith, we grasp God's promises. We can't see it, right? We often don't feel it. And the reality in the world seems to deny it. But hearing God's word brings us to faith. So let's start there. How do we get that faith? Well, Paul writes in Romans, faith comes through what is heard. So when we hear God's word, yes, we can read it in our Bibles, but even more so when we gather with faithful people and hear that word together at church, that faith is growing in us. We hear God's promises for us. We call it good news, the gospel. And that Holy Spirit gets a hold of that, that seed in us and that faith grows to trust that God's word is good for us, to, 
to know that that word will sustain us forever. We receive it in faith. And it might be hard to understand sometimes. Theologian and author Steve Paulson writes that faith grasps a promise in complete assurance. Faith gets its voice and begins verbalizing to God in prayer by asserting, you promised. We hear those promises of God and we can hold God to it because we know that the word is true. Children understand this. Do you ever make a promise to a kid? They will not let you forget, right? You promised. But, you know, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't because I was in the house the other day and I, and I looked at my, my kids and I said, guys, what, what are you doing? I, I just asked you to put your socks and shoes on. You did? When was that? It was like 18 seconds ago. They already forgot. And yet, uh, a, just last week, the kids came up to me and said, well, are we going to get ice cream after school today? And I said, what, what are you talking about? Well, they said, well, about two and a half weeks ago, it was 3.30 p.m., and I said we could get ice cream, and you said maybe next week. So now it's next week. Let's go. They remember that. You promised. They will not let you forget, unwilling to let you off the hook. And I read this week that it's because children, uh, they haven't yet learned to reason fully, and they live in their emotions, right? And their emotions create a brilliant visualization of the thing that has been promised. Let's say ice cream. They know what that looks like. They know how it's going to make them feel. They know what it's going to taste like, and they're thinking about all the flavors. Oh, I'm going to get this one or that one. They can see it. And all the more when it's mom or dad or grandma or grandpa makes that promise, they know that that person is trustworthy. They know they're going to follow through on the promise. They know it's good. And they expect the parent to do what they said they would do. We're like that with God too. Or we can be. We can remind God, hey, you promised that this was going to go well for me. You promised me I wouldn't be alone. You promised that I could come out of this difficult time. And God will remember the promise. But it begins by receiving those promises in faith. So if you've got your bulletin, you can write down and fill in the blanks. God's gifts are received in faith. Because in Christ, we know God has promised us everything, everything we need, mercy, forgiveness, abundant, everlasting life. But it's hard because when we go out there, we can't always see it. We get sidetracked or distracted. We're only human. Our perception is limited. So we struggle. We get depressed or we, we don't see everything unfolding as it should. We get frustrated. It might be hard to see how are we welcomed into a family of people who are quite different than us, who look and act and live differently. Or we hear that we've been freed from sin. But what does that look like? In reality, how do I live that out? Those are churchy words, right? Or we know all too well that our bodies wear out and people we love die. So what's all this business about everlasting life and abundant life forever? It's hard to make those two connect. But the Apostle Peter helps a little bit here, connecting faith with receiving God's promises. He says it this way, although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him, and say this part with me, and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. That's from 1 Peter chapter 1, that joy that comes from knowing Jesus, even though we don't see him, from knowing that love is ours, believing in him. Because when we have faith, the world looks different. And even though we suffer, we can know that God is good, all the time, all the time. Now we got it. You can trust that good things are going to happen, even when it might look bleak at the time. When we're hungry, if we're faithful, we know God will provide what is needed. Or when we feel alone, remember Pastor Don talked about last week, when we feel alone sometimes, we can know that God is with us. God has promised to hear our prayers, knows our hearts, and is always, always near even when things are not as they should be, and they usually are not, we can know that we are God's children, forgiven, blessed, made free from sin and death through Christ's death and resurrection. Jesus died. Jesus rose again and promises us that we won't be alone. 
that we would have the spirit of God in us even. That's powerful. Powerful. The spirit moves in us. It brings us to faith. And we trust in Jesus so we can believe that this promise is true. Jesus says, I'm going to give you a helper, an advocate, and we can count on it. So we have this Holy Spirit. We, we understand that we receive that spirit in our baptism. And God gets a hold of us and welcomes us into the family and begins to nurture us in faith by a loving family of faith in the, in the congregation. That spirit is powerful. But more than that, it's not just something we hide. We have to live it out. Jesus frees us to live by the spirit. Now that we have that gift received in faith, Jesus frees us to live by the Spirit so we don't go through life worrying about all the same stuff, fighting the same old battles of shame and guilt. We have this helper now, just like Jesus promised us. This Spirit, this power of God brings healing and hope and help, but that's not all. She's a gift giver. All these gifts this power of God brings. Remember, the fruit of the Spirit is love, peace, Patience, joy, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Good stuff, right? And we can open that up with joy and shout, banana! Yes, that's the kind of joy we receive these gifts. Because when you, somebody gives you a gift, what do you do? Do you fold your arms and pout? Do you get embarrassed and run away? No, when you get a gift, you are excited. You say, thank you. Yes, you get excited, you thank the giver, you celebrate. Faith allows us to do that now, to celebrate those gifts now, what we will receive in the future. We can love others now, live with joy, even when we might not always be happy. We can find peace when the world seems out of control. Practice patience with each other, even when that's difficult. Practice acts of kindness be generous, be faithful, even though we might have doubts sometimes. Be gentle to others and to ourselves. Practice self-control for the sake of our neighbors. All those gifts come through the Holy Spirit. But to live by that Spirit is to live faithfully, to trust that the Spirit's power is at work in us and among us. Believing that Jesus is walking with us and giving glory to God every chance we get. And we, we receive those gifts and we give thanks and we shout, banana! It's powerful, that kind of joy. Jesus does this. Jesus thanks the Father all the time in his ministry. We hear in the gospel today, Jesus thanking the Father for revealing these gifts, not to the ones who thought they were smart and wise, because they knew the rules and the books and judging those who did wrong and didn't follow the right way. Jesus says, thank you, Father, for revealing this to infants, to little ones, ones who really struggled, who knew sickness and shame and poverty and loss. And he must have known those would be the ones who would feel the burden of the rules and the yoke of the law. We hear that word, put that yoke on, People would follow different teachers of the law. And sometimes that would be a heavy burden to follow all those rules all the time. Jesus says, put my yoke on. My burden is easy. My burden is light. He knew that these little ones, those ones who suffered, would be ones to receive God's gifts with real gratitude, knowing the difference it made in their lives, to celebrate with faith and gratitude. So we can write this one down. Faithful people are Thankful people. Faithful people are thankful people. We have gratitude. Even when times are tough, we can give thanks for something, right? Even when we're going through it. Sometimes you forget, but people will remind you. Look at these blessings around you. Jesus invites the world to find rest in him. He knows we need it. So many today, even still fighting for justice, working themselves to death just to survive, to make ends meet. Those who find healing from addiction, disease, grief, and loneliness, they can give thanks that Jesus offers this rest. This rest that Jesus offers is rest from trying to live up to the world's standard, rest from trying to save ourselves, rest from the burdens of shame and self-loathing and guilt and regret. Jesus says, come to me. 
I'll take it all. Lay it down, brothers and sisters. Lay it down. I will give you everything you need. And faithfully, we can say thank you, God. We are thankful because in faith we find our rest in Jesus. The author of Colossians writes it this way, saying, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts and be thankful. And whatever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. When we are faithful, nothing else can rule in our hearts. That peace of Christ is in there. Not our need to succeed, not our own anxiety or expectations of the world, and we can be thankful people because we know every good gift is from God. And when the world fails us, we can still know God's steadfast love endures forever. We can live in gratitude and, and give God glory and thanksgiving and shout, banana! You're going to remember that when you see a banana now. What is it like without that? I mean, without faith, I know there are plenty of good people out there who claim not to have faith. They do good things. They, they take care of each other. They serve. But without faith, it's like we're on our own. And we only know what we see. And we can become cynical or unappreciative or selfish. We can only celebrate what we receive by the work of our hands and our rest won't last long. That anxiety creeps in. And we're pushed to fight and scrape by and struggle and fail and freak out and forget the needs of others around us. And you might get by that way for a while, but how can it mean anything? How can anything last? We reconnect with faith and God's promises for us. Faith leads us to celebrate, to appreciate God's gifts, to have that joy even in difficult times, to live with gratitude to receive the promises of God here and now, knowing that we belong to Christ. And that makes a difference for us in the world we live in, the way we treat each other, the way we show up to serve together. Those promises are ours now, and we can, be, we can remember and we can remind God, you promised you wouldn't leave me alone. You promised me things would get better. You promised healing would come. And know those promises are real. We have that power of forgiveness and healing and new life that comes to us through the cross and the spirit of God that's in us. And it leads us to live abundant life here and now. We don't have to wait. The promise is real. The promise is for you. All God's gifts are yours today, received in faith. I invite you to pray. God, we thank you for all the blessings of this life for the relationships that you've brought us into, for the, the gifts that you give. Most of all, for your son, Jesus, for the cross and the promise of new life in you. May we experience it now with joy and celebration and gratitude. In Jesus' name, amen.